Math 3 Practice 2A.5.2. So we're dealing with um, the sum of a finite geometric series. So the sum we're adding, finite means it stops, it's discrete, okay, it won't keep going. And geometric, we're dealing with multiplication. Now, we'll notice this guy here. This is the summation um, notation formula, okay, just an easier way to write it. So this kind of weird looking E, all that stands for is that we're taking the summation, okay? That's a key that we're, we're adding this all together. At the bottom, it usually uses the variable k. We'll have k equals 1, okay? That's the first number we're going to start with, okay? So taking this information, we're going to first start with 1. Then, how far do we go? Well, the number up here on the top of it tells us how far we go. So we go from 1 and then we do 2, and then 3, and then 4, until we get to 5. So we're going to do it 5 times using this information, and we're going to add that all together. So this part is our formula that we're using. So when it wants you to expand it, it just wants you to write it out. It doesn't want you to actually add it. Okay, so 24 times 1 fourth, k minus 1. Our first k is 1, so 1 minus 1. Okay, which 1 minus 1 is 0, right? So we could just write 0. Okay, then plus, because we're adding this, we use 2. So 24 times 1 fourth to the k minus 1. So 2 minus 1, which would just be 1. Plus 24 times 1 fourth to the k minus 1 using 3. So 3 minus 1 would be 2. Plus 24 times 1 fourth to the 4 minus 2 or 4 minus 1, which would be 3, plus 24 times 1 fourth to the 5 minus 1, which would be 4. Okay. Now, we don't just stop there when we're expanding it. We want to simplify as much as possible. Okay, so 1 fourth to the 0 is 1, so we'd have 24 plus 1 fourth to the 1st is 1 fourth. 24 times 1 fourth, that's like 6 times 4, so the 4s cancel, right? 24 times 1 fourth, okay, that'd be like 24 divided by 4, which is 6, same thing, okay, plus 1 fourth squared, remember when you square a fraction, square the top, 1 squared would be 1, square the bottom, 4 squared would be 16, so we'd have 24 times 1 over 16, which they both have 4s in them, 16 is 4 times 4, 24 is 6 times 4, so the 4s would cancel and we'd have 6 over 4, which 6 over 4 reduces to 3 halves, so plus 3 halves, okay, plus, so that took care of this one, this one, and this one, now we have 1 fourth to the third, so that'd be 1 over 4 to the third, right, because 1 to the third is 1, 4 to the third would be 64, so 24 times 1 over 64, or 24 over 64, once again, we're dealing with some 4s here, so 24 is like 4 times 6, um, 64 is like 4 times 4 times 4, so we get rid of one of the 4s, okay, then we have 4 times 4 is 16, so 6 over 16, which can be reduced to 3 over 8 if we divide both by 2, so plus 3 over 8 then plus 24 times 1 to the 1 fourth to the 4th, that would be 1, that would be 4 to the 4th, I'd probably want a calculator to double check that one, or it should be 64 times 4, right? 56, 256, so 1 over 256, or 24 over 256, Okay, the same way to think about this, though, is that that's 4 over 6, or 4 times 6, and 256 is like 4 times 64, isn't it? Okay, so that would be 6 over 64, which we could divide those by 2, and we'd get 3 over 64 divided by 2 would be 32. That's what it meant by expanding it. Okay. 
That's what it meant by expanding it. And that's all we have to do for number one. And I know that looks like a lot. Okay. Now, number two actually wants us to go to the next step and actually figure out what that is. Now, in our calculators, you actually have that symbol and you could type that in and have the calculator do it. Okay. However, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. But just know on our calculators, we can do these types of things in there. Now, number three wants us to do it with the sum formula, so I'll talk about that later. But So our starting number is one, and we're going to four. And there's our function. So 2 times 5 to the 1 minus 1 plus 2 times 5 to the 2 minus 1 plus 2 times 5 to the 3 minus 1 plus 2 times 5 to the 4 minus 1. Okay? So that's expanding it out. Now let's, we know that's 0. We know that's 1. Let's start simplifying. We know that's 2. And we know that's 3. So 5 to the first is 1, so 2 times 1 plus 5 to the first is 5, 2 times 5 plus 5 squared is 25, 2 times 25 plus 2 times 5 cubed is 125. So 2 plus 10 plus 50 plus 250. Okay? So then add those together, that would be 300 and 12. So this equals 312. All right. Now, on number three, it wants us to use the sum formula. Okay. So the sum formula is essentially the same thing. Um, gives us the same stuff as doing this, but it, it's a formula, so it's simplified. So we get a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay? And it has to do with the patterns you, you run into. Okay? So, our a sub 1... So, sorry about that bell. So, looking at the sum formula, we have a sub 1, which is our first term. So, that would be represented by this guy. Which, if you have a number multiplying outside there, and you're starting with 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0. So, we'd eliminate that 1 third. So, our a sub 1 would be 12. Okay. We also have r, that's our common ratio. What are we multiplying by? Well, looking at this formula, it's the starting number times the ratio, so it's one-third. Then n stands for the number of terms we have. To figure that out, we look and say we start at 1, and we go to 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 terms. Okay. Now that one was pretty easy because it started at 1 and ended at 8, so n would equal 8. But sometimes you'll get ones that don't start at 1, and so you do want to double check that. Okay, so let me give, me give us some room to actually work this out. So, this will give us the same answer that we just got, like number 2. Just some may think it's easier. So a sub 1 is 12, so we go 12 times 1 minus 1 third to the 8th over 1 minus 1 third. Okay? So there's the formula. Now we're going to simplify that to get our answer. So 1 third to the 8th. 1 to the 8th is 1. 3 to the 8th. What is that? Let me grab a calculator. So 3 to the 8th would be 1 over 6, 5, 6, 1. Okay? over 1 minus 1 third. Okay, now we could just type this whole thing into a calculator and figure it out that way as well. I'm just, for whatever reason, I like to do things by hand and make a lot of pain for ourselves, I guess. So, um, the best way we can subtract from 1 is by turning this 1 into 6561 over 6561. Then we have common denominators. So I just subtract, and I end up with 12 times 6,560 over 6,561 divided by, now this 1 minus 1 third, I could make that 3 
over 3, so 3 minus 1 would be 2 thirds. Okay. Now, here I definitely am going to need the calculator because I can't do the rest of this, so I go 12 times 6560 divided by 6561. Okay, and all of that is divided by, hold on, making some mistakes here in my typing it in. Okay, that is divided by 2 divided by 3. Which, when I do that, I get 17.997 for my answer. Okay? So, and once again, I probably would have just written it like this into the calculator and had it do all that extra work for me. I suppose that's the benefit, but if our calculator can do it that way, which it can, that's even easier to do. All right. So looking at 4. Now, 4 says find the first term of the series given the sum, the common ratio, and the number of terms. So this time, they want us to, this S of n is equal to, that's the sum of our thing, they want us to work backwards, essentially, okay? And they want us to find this piece given the rest. So we just write it in. So it would be 20,000 equals a sub 1 times 1 minus 0.996 to the 48 over 1 minus 0.996. So basically what we need to do is figure out this piece, okay? And then we can divide it from that, and that will give us our answer, okay? So I could time figure out but what 1 minus 0 0.996 is, 0 0.004, okay? So a sub 1 uh, times 1 minus 0 0.996 to the 48th over 0 0.004. So if I times by 0 0.004 on both sides... We can get rid of that fraction. Okay, so take that times it by twenty thousand. Gives me eighty, and then we got rid of our fraction because those canceled. So a sub one times one minus point nine nine six to the forty eighth. So what I'm going to do is use a calculator and figure that out, and then I'm going to divide by that. Okay, so I'd go one minus point nine nine six to the 48, that gives me a really ugly decimal, 0.17501083, okay, which I divide on both sides, and that will give me what my first term is, my a sub 1. So I go 80 divided by that answer, and I get about 457.115. Four hundred fifty-seven point one one five. Okay, and there I go with that. All right, now the rest are story problems, so let's take a look at these ones and try to answer them the best we can. Now, I suppose we could use all this stuff up here to help us with these, but let's see if we need to. So, you found out that one of your favorite TV shows has been canceled. That day you posted news to five friends on your social media page. The next day... Those five friends post to five more friends' pages, okay? And so we're trying to say after six days. All right. So if we're looking at this, so um, on that first day, okay, you told five friends, okay? On the second day, each of those five told five more, so they multiplied by five, right? To give us 25. Then the third day times it by one, five, so 125. The fourth day... Timesing by 5, 625. The fifth day, timesing by 5, gives us 3125. And then the sixth day, except I think I'm off on my days here. No? So, um, the formula would actually have us starting like, you know how we have the k minus 1 here? Okay, we started out with us, and then we told five people, 
and we kept each five people told five people, um, but we'd have to do the n minus 1. So it would be 1 times 5 to the 6 minus 1. If we figure that out, that gives us this date, this number. But the problem is we're adding these because we want to know the total number of people. So this is just on that sixth day how many people knew. So we have to take all of these and add them together, which when we do, that gives us 3,905. Okay, Because it wants to know how many people will have shared it. Okay, So how many total people are sharing, not just how many on that certain day. So we have to end up adding all these together. But we don't add this one because we have to kick it back as if this were, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, okay? But on the sixth day, these people haven't shared it either, okay? They just received it. So that's kind of why it works that way. But that's what we'd end up with, okay? So um, 6 says, Santo catches a contagious cough at the beginning of the school day. Within one hour, he has infected four other people in the school. Okay. If this pattern continues, how many people will be infected by the end of the school day? So, he used to have it. He infected four more people. They keep infecting people. Okay, so there's our function. That's how we'd write it. Now, if we wanted to, we could use that summation. Okay, and we'd say k equals 1. And we want to know, after five hours, here's our pattern. Okay, and we could use this to figure it out. Okay. Now, if you don't have a calculator that can do that, is that necessarily the easiest? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think making a table is usually probably easier. Okay. So, we would go Oops. Uh, let's see. No, one. So, the first person was Santo. Then after, or the first hour, Santo. Then the second hour, we had four more people, so he times it by four that were infected. Then after the third hour, those four each infected four to get 16. After the fourth hour, 64. And then after the fifth hour, 256. Then we add those all up together, and we get 341 people who would be infected. Okay. Now, if we typed it in using this, we'd come up with the same exact information. Okay? All right. New is a biologist who is conducting a study about a species of butterfly called the common buckeye. She estimates that in the spring, the number of butterflies living in her study area will increase rapidly. For every butterfly in the area, two new butterflies hatch each week. For approximately 50 butterflies were counted during the first week of the season. How many butterflies will there be by the 12th week? So, we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now that we're getting at higher numbers, it might be easier to use that summation. Okay, so we started with 50, and basically they're doubling, so timesing by 2 every time. We start at 1, and we go up to 12. So we could use that and use a calculator, type it in that way, that would spit out our answer. But if we don't, um, we could also go back and try to expand it out and evaluate it or use the sum formula to do it. Those would all work as well. But I think, honestly, this is easier. So we had 50. Okay. Then we're doubling, right? So 100. Then 200. Then 400. 800. 1600. 3200. 64. Um, 128, uh, 256, then 512, yep, so 512, zero, zero, so 51,200, and then that 12th would give us 1,024,000, oh wait, no. 102,400, okay? Then we'd need to add all those numbers up. Because it wants the total number, not just how many on that last day there were, 
or weeks or whatever. So I add these all up. So a table here works just as easily sometimes as that summation. But the further we get going, the more the summation would help us out. And if we have the technology, the summation would definitely be the easiest. So 204,750 for number 7. Okay. All right. So Lydia is a childbirth birth assistant. The first year of her career, she attended the birth of two babies. Every year after that, the number of births Lydia attended has been double that of the previous year. So first year, two, and she's doubling it. So second year, four, third year, eight, fourth year, 16, fifth year, 32, and sixth year, 64. Okay. So we would add those all together to get our answer. 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. And we'd get 126 births. Now, if we wanted to use the summation, that one wasn't too bad, was it? Okay. We started at 1. We went to 6 years. We started at 2 babies, and they doubled every year. Okay. And you could do it that way. Number nine, your sister just graduated from college and wants to buy a new car. She found a car for 14000 The annual percentage rate is 4% with the interest compounded monthly. What will be her monthly car payment if she takes out a three-year loan for that amount? Okay, now this is dealing with a special type of summation. Okay, it's a um, loan one. We call it an amortized, amortized loan, okay? So I'm not too familiar with it. But it looks like this. P equals the summation. K equals 1 to N. A times 1 plus 1 plus I to the K minus 1. Okay. That's what it looks like. Now, P is our loan amount. A is our monthly payment. I is the interest rate, and N is the number of monthly payments, okay? So, she wants three years. There's 12 months in each year, so 3 times 12 would give us 36 months. So N should be 36, okay? Now, um, she, the principal... P was 14,000, okay? Her I, her rate, is 4%, which we write 0 0.04, okay? Now what we are trying to figure out is what the A is, okay? So basically what this is telling us is the monthly payment times the interest rate and this, all this added together has to equal that principal, okay? And that's kind of how they figure that out. Now, what we want to do is we don't want to use this one, but we can use that summation, right? Because we're dealing with the summation. So a sub 1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, we can use that summation because it's like what we did on number uh, 4. Okay, it's going to be very similar to that. Now, this um, 1 divided by 1 plus I, that is our R, okay, so that's the rate. So we need to figure that out so we can plug it into the R. So I is 0 0.04, so 1 plus 0 0.04 would be 1.04 over 1. So 1 divided by 1.04 gives us a decimal, which we should probably calculate to like, you know, nearest hundredth or something. So 0.9615. Okay, that'll be our rate. Now, our principal is this summation, okay? So that would be the same thing. So, erasing this, because that's what it's all based off of, um, we would go 14,000 equals a sub 1 times 1 minus our rate, 0.9615 to the n, 36, over 1 minus 0 0.9615.
Okay. Then 1 minus 0.9615 would give us 0 0.0385, which we're going to times by this to get rid of that fraction, right? So that times 14,000 gives us 539 equals a sub 1, which is our amount, monthly amount, times, then we do this, 1 minus 0.9615 to the 36, which gives us about 0.7567, okay? Then we divide by 0.7567, and I kind of rounded there, so... We end up with about $712.32. Alright, so now number 10, I believe we're doing the same thing. Okay. So, she wants to borrow 150, so S sub N would equal 150,000 for 15 years. So 15 times 3 would be 45, would be our months, our N, at a rate of 4.5. So R would be, we go 1 plus over 1 plus i, so that rate, 4.5.045, so 1 over 1 plus 0 0.045 would be 1.045 over 1, which would give us about 0.9569 if we round, okay? So then we use that formula, so S of n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus that rate, 0.9519 to the n, 45, over 1 minus 0.9519. Okay, now what we could do is just put this whole thing into our calculator. It actually would save us a bit of time. Okay, so 9519... Okay, and that would give us 150,000 equals a sub 1 times 18.52816647. Then we divide by that guy on both sides, and that should give us our answer. So 150,000 divided by that, and that gives us, so our monthly payment would be I made a stupid mistake on that one, didn't I? It's, N isn't 45. 15 years times 12, duh. I was probably yelling at the screen. Okay, it would be 180. So that should actually be 180. Okay, so let me recalculate that. And you know what I just realized? I think I was making a weird mistake. And I'm not sure why. Um... Because it was compounded monthly, I had to take the percentage, 0 0.04, and divide it by 12 first, and that actually becomes my I. So 0 .00, 0, uh, 0 0.00375, which that would give me... A rate of 0.9963, which if I change that, 0.9963, I bet that's what we needed to do on 9 too. Probably screwed up 9 as well. Okay, let me recalculate that. That actually becomes 131, which if I go 150,000 divided by that, that gives me 11. 139 and 92, which looks a lot better. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now um, apparently we needed to redo number 9. I'll hurry and redo it and just show it to you because I'm almost out of time. So because these are being compounded monthly, we have to take that rate and divide it by 12, which gives us I, which then using I we find our rate, so it's 0 0.9967, which was different. Then I take that and I multiply that out like that, get 14,000 equals a sub 1 times. So I multiply that out and get 33.9966-8169. Then we divide by that on both sides, and that gives us a sub 1 equals 
411.80. So sorry I did that wrong. Sorry I didn't realize I needed to do that next one. I'll make sure to get it in class. So hopefully you already know my mistakes. All right, there we go.